Salutations, players! It is I, Count Marius van Perfufuldink, and today we will be showing you how to paint up a state trooper in the colors of Sylvania, that cursed and misbegotten land which no longer exists thanks to the Emperor's light being brought to it and folding it into nearby Stirland. Now here is a state trooper in the aforementioned non-existent Sylvanian colors, and we will start with Dryad Bark. We will also paint with Corn Red, Nagaroth Knight, Ulthuan Grey, Abadabon Black, Steel Legion Drab, Bugman's Glow, uh, Rakarth Flesh, Lead Elcher, Mournfang Brown, and here we go. Now, the Sylvanian colors are not one that many people will be familiar with. It is the region of the Empire. Oh, can't forget Raikman Flesh Shade. Yes, and Agrax Earth Shade. It is a region of the Empire that has been uh, pretty much destroyed thanks to Count Vlad von Karstein's uh, destruction and uh, invasion of the Empire some couple hundred years ago. So, if you listen to the General Nonsense podcast, you will hear Wawaste discussing the finer points of creating a Sylvanian army, and uh, this has been in the works for some time now, since the July Painting Challenge of 2013, when Zifa, one of Wawaste's subscribers and participants in the July Painting Challenge, had asked to do a video with some information about creating a Sylvanian army. Now, as you can see, the first thing we always start with is the flesh, which is Bugman's Glow. And we will be painting all of the skin tones in this Bugman's Glow flesh color. And I must say, it has been some time since you've heard from me because I've been fighting the good fight with our esteemed emperor, uh, blessed be his name, Karl Franz, first of his line. Paint. You, you must remember to paint behind the ears and also to get all the fingertips. Yes, it's been a pretty ghastly time in the Empire, as you can imagine, with all this end times shenanigans, and uh, we hope it will all be over very soon. <laughs> Marius! Marius! Marius, where are you? Uh, yes. Uh, Lord Karl Franz, is that you? Marius, we've got to get out of here, man. What are you doing making videos? Uh, I'm trying to show the people how to paint in Sylvanian colors, my lord. No, no, we don't have time for that. There's horrible things happening. Aldorf has fallen. Bretonia is gone. Kislev is wiped off the map. We've got to get out of here. We've got to go. I think I might be dead. I don't know. I haven't been reading all of my end times fluff yet, but I think I might be dead. Marius, what do we do? Oh, my. Oh dear, my lord, I believe there's only one thing we can do at this point. The end times being right around the corner, and this Sylvanian tutorial has given me an idea. My lord, we must go back. Back? Marius, what are you talking about? We must go back to the future. Hey! Hey, you want? I don't want any. I'm sleeping. I spent all night partying in the clubs. Go away! Uh, hello. Are you Louis the Necromancer? Hey! Who are you? I don't owe you money, do I? I can't remember. Everything after 1977 is a foggy haze. You fool. It is I, Count Marius van Perfufeldink, with the Emperor, Lord Karl Franz. Kneel before the Emperor, you fool. I can't kneel. I got the gout. Ah, that's okay. Louis, 
I hear that you are a master of the magical arts and the manipulation of the winds of magical energy. Is this true? You're the emperor. Yes, it is I, Carl Franz. This is, this is very important business. I need the time magic. Hey, time magic. Yes, I seem to recall being very proficient at time magic in my day. Why, I remember this one time when I took this foxy young Latina with me and I cast a magical vortex and the two of us visited the year 1725, Earth time. Oh, it was a wonderful time. There were many, many foxy ladies back then. You see, they didn't care about them being skinny. All they cared about was them being alive. So we had very many plump and uh, well-rounded women. It was beautiful. It was a better time. Anyways, we would like it if you could transport us back to long before this uh, end times shenanigans happened, back when things were st safe and stable and, f and, and everyone was happy and free and we had no giant monsters like the Glotkin or, uh, or Nagash and any of that nonsense. Can you do that for us, Lewis? You will be paid very handsomely. I don't care about payment. All I care about is hooking up with some fine young minority women. That's disgusting, man. How can you be saying this? It is a horrible time for all of us. I'm sorry. I'm just so lonely. Day after day, I sit in my necromancer's tower, and I watch the birds fly by, and I watch the leaves change on the tree, and I think to myself, Louis, what have you done with your life? You've done nothing but demean and degrade yourself and make your family ashamed of you and be a horrible person. And it has gone on for far too long. Why, just the other day I was sitting up in my necromancer's tower and I said, I said to myself, if I could do it all again, if I could be the man I was only, say, 200 years ago, then I would be happy. But this solves all of our problems, Lewis. Why don't you create a magical vortex to send us way back in time, before this has ever happened, uh, back before the uh, Sylvanian army was destroyed by that horrible and creepy uh, Vlad von Karstein, and why don't you help us restore things to the way they were before? Yeah, I think that is a wonderful idea. In fact, your story made me so bored, I fell asleep over here because it shames me to look at you, you tiny old decrepit man and reminder of man's failings and mortalities, looking all skinny over there with your tiny shriveled up muscles and your wrinkly old leathery face. Well, I don't know about any of that. But I do like the idea of going back in time. Let me just get some things together. I don't know, Marius. Do you think he can be trusted? I don't know if I should trust this man. He's very creepy looking and he's also got very tiny muscles. Don't worry, Lord Carl Franz. I believe if there's one man who can help us to undo the wrongs, all of the wrongs that have been done in our great universe in the last few months, then it is this man. He will take us back to before this all happened, maybe back in time, even so far back as to when there was absolutely nothing going on in the world, everything was stagnant, and the timeline did not move forward at all. Ah, those were younger and more happier times for me, Marius. I would like to see those times again. So would I, my lord. Okay, I've got everything I need now. I'm going to cast my magic spell. You boys better step back. Holy guacamole, what is that monster? Ah, don't worry about him. That's his death claw, my griffin. He will stay back here and he will guard the place until we return. That's a good boy, death claw. 
God, everything, keep it all nice and safe now, do you hear me? Alright, whatever. Here we go! Shim Shim Shalabim! What will happen to Lewis and the boys? Is Karl Franz really dead? Will Marius van Perfufeldink ever get a consistent accent? Join us next time! On How to Paint a Sylvanian State Trooper Pre-Vlad Heresy Part 1! The Emperor Karl Franz is not associated with Louis the Necromancer and is in no way liable for anything that the decrepit old man does or says. This entire video is a parody of a quote-unquote normal tutorial because I was bored one day and wanted to play around with the sound in iMovie. If anyone is still listening to this rubbish, please don't hold it against me. I love you. Lewis, I'm home. It's me, Igor. Hmm, that's odd. Where is everybody? Oh, look, a note. Dear Igor, I have gone back in time to save the present. The end times was too horrible to continue putting up with. So Tony the Emperor, Emperor Count, Count Marius von Perfuffelding and, and I have gone back in time to long before this ever started. Please be a good boy and remember if the authorities come sniffing around for a devious and not quite legal necromantic business. No snitching! Your, Your friend, friend Lewis. Lewis. Hmm. Well, I guess they solved that problem. So oh, this? P.S. Don't mind the horrifying griffin that is hulking about the place. That belongs to Carl Franz. Horrifying grip. Ah! The night is dark. The thunder rolls in off the plains. Do you hear them, my love? The children of the night. The music they make pleases me. They are calling to me, my love. Telling me that tonight is the night. The night that mothers warn their children of. When everyone locks themselves safe away in their houses, afraid of the terrors outside in the wilderness, we will rise up against the Imperial aggressors and we will take this country out from under them. Do you not agree, my love? Isabella, are you listening to me? Oh, Vlad. I love when you talk like that. It's so spooky and scary and grim dark and I just love it. Isabella, ever since I raise you back from the dead and make you vampire like me, you seem little bit off. Why you talk like that? You never used to talk like that. Talk like what? I don't know what you're talking about. Your voice. It is annoying to my ears before you used to have the deep, the sexy voice. And I used to listen to you talk and say things in your native language. And I used to say, oh my goodness, this is a bella. Her voice is so sexy. But now I listen to you talk and I just, it sounds like a little animal, like a little, like a little child. And I don't know. What are you talking about? I, I think sometimes you do it to annoy me. And then I ask myself, why would she do that? Why is she trying to annoy me? She knows that I am Lord of Undead here. Ah, oh, Vlad. I think you just worry too much. You think all day about how to take over the empire and at night you come back home and you're all stressed out. Why don't you let me massage your back or maybe I comb your nice scraggly hair and then I make you your favorite dish, the Van Drake roast pork. Woman, I don't eat roast pork. How many times I tell you I am a vampire? I was just doing that to fool you. I was really just pretending to chew it and then when you were looking I throw it to the dogs. You throw my roast pork to the dogs? Oh Vlad, why you do this to me? You break my heart. Isabella, 
for the last time. Yeah. I have to be serious now. Yeah. Enough of your foolishness. Okay. I am going to go downstairs and I am going to use my magical spell and raise the undead army. Okay. I need you by my side because at one time I thought you were very beautiful and very smart and intelligent and I think that raising you back from the dead was probably not such a good idea. I don't know what are you talking about. So together we will go downstairs and we will make a good face for everybody. Oh, nice. and we will show off how powerful we are when we raise on that army and march on the empire, yeah? Okay, whatever you say, Vladdy. Stop right there, you fiend. It is I, Count Marius von Perfufeldink. I have come here with the Lord Emperor Karl Franz, blessed be what his name, and this dirty old man, hey, Louis the Necromancer, and we've come to put an end to your evil schemes. You, you three who arrive in Magical Vortex, I smell the future dripping off of you. It disgusts me. It is a future filled with big giant plastic monsters and horribly cartoony paint jobs that is taken away from the aesthetic of the grim and dark. What, 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 what do you want, Isabella? I recognize this man. What? Which man? The man in the back. The dirty old man. I recognize him. You old man. Hey, are you talking to me? My wife, the Countess Isabella von Karstein, says she recognizes you. Who are you to her? Who are you at all? I'm just a dirty old man. I want to go to the nightclubs, and I want to sip Long Island iced teas, and talk to the fine chicas and Latinas. No, no you not. That's not who you were. I know you as Louis the White. What? And they call me racist? Louis the White was the greatest mage who ever lived and he casted the white magic and he's so good and the handsome and all the ladies like him but i was selfish and i was vain and i was traveling the roads of the empire all by my lonesome trying to find meaning in my life because i was blessed with the power of light magic lewis is this True. Is this really true what you're saying? You used to be a magician studying in light magic, the good and life-affirming and life-giving magic, the best one of them all. How is this possible that you went from that to what you are today? A dirty, scruffy, mangy old man skulking about the graveyards and raising zombies and skeletons. Well, it's a sad story, but a story that you would be well to remember. For it has to do with the greatest of man's foibles, that great, great sin of hubris. You see, when I was traveling the empire, I met a young man, and he asked me what was the meaning of life. And I remember saying to that young man, well, it has to do with cause and effect, you see. If you don't cause something to be, then the effect of that thing you caused cannot be undone in the first place. And then he took my money because he was a punk. And that's why every time I see a young man nowadays, I tell him, Get off my lawn! And then I shake my staff at them for good measure. Uh, I'm coming down. I need my Percocets and my Ambians. I need my Ambians. Ah, oh, see, see. It's a terrible thing. The drugs is a terrible, terrible thing. I'm so sorry for you, Louis. Yes, well, if we can all get on with the business of killing these three so I can go back downstairs and raise my giant undead army. Wait, where is muscle head big meathead man? I am right here. 
Ha! <laughs> While Lewis was boring you with his old stories, I took the advantage to sneak up behind you and grab you by the throat, and now I'm strangling you. No, no, put that him down. Oh, very good, Your Highness. While you do that, I'm going to just rifle through these drawers and see if I can find a way of undoing all this horribleness before it comes to pass. Oh, for heaven's sake, who could that be now? Hello? Hello, is anybody home in this creepy old castle? Selling Goo Scout cookies down here. Hello? Hello? It's me, Goo Scout Eagle. Would anybody like to buy some ginger snaps? Or some Samoans? Hello? Stay tuned for scenes from next week's episode of How to Paint a Pre-Vlad Heresy Sylvanian State Trooper Part 2. Ah, where did the vampire go? I left him right here! I hate to be the bearer of bad news everybody, but it looks like we're stuck in the past! Is that a banana in your pocket? Or are you just happy to see Isabella? Well, that's weird. My recording light was on. So, looks like we're getting onto the silver now with Lead Belcher. And I thought, you know, you can either go with black armor, like if you look at my Averland painting tutorial, I painted the armor on it that night, or that uh, pistolier rather, I believe it was, with black armor and gold edging on the paints. And for a dark and evil country like Sylvania, black armor might be good. I know I'm definitely going to keep the shield in black, but when I was looking at the uniforms and heraldry of the Empire for the Sylvania section, the armor looks silver, so I'm going to keep it very close to it. Moving on to Abaddon Black now, what we're going to be doing is, I think, I think we're going to be painting on What was it? The mustache? Cleaning of the mustache? I can't remember. I guess it's uh, underneath the shield there. And oh yes, in the Uniforms and Heraldry book, you'll notice that if you have the Sylvanian section open, all of the state troopers, or I guess one of two models that they show, or color, color plates, the Soldiers' uniforms have beige sleeves, which I interpreted as these Rackarth flesh sleeves, with black slashes, black in the slashes. Normally, I don't care for black as a color to be used in the slashes, just because it seems almost like lazy shadowing. I'd much rather have a color in there that I could bounce off of, like the red or the or the purple even. But um, this was just. You know, a design choice. I decided to follow the uniforms and heraldry book to be as as close to the Sylvanian color scheme in there as possible. And so, doing that, any Sylvanian troops that you paint will have beige sleeves with black in the slashes, and be have a, a red vest or jerkin or shirt, and the legs will be half black and half red. So that's what my normal colors are going to be for them and you can decide to change them up later if you want to. Okay, now we're moving on to Othuan Grey, and Othuan Grey is going to highlight... I believe we're going to be using it to paint the cards. One thing I love about these Empire State Trooper bodies is they have so much detail on them, and I've noticed that a lot of them have these playing cards pinned to their waist, like they're their lucky, you know, their Ace of Hearts or their lucky cards, so it's kind of like bringing them good luck. The way I interpret it is they're very terrified and there's horrible things all over the old world and uh, they might have had some good luck in the past. Maybe this guy had five aces or something like that, four aces, whatever, and he decided he's going to take his his favorite aces in his, in his favorite pack of cards 
and pin them to his waist so that it'll bring him good luck in battle. And I think it's little narrative flourishes and touches like this that, I mean, they don't tell you what those are for. You open the box and you build up these models. They don't say, this is why this one body has an hourglass strapped to his waist. This is why this other model has a skull strapped to his waist. So you can make up your own stories. Like, whose skull does this guy have hanging off of his sword belt? I don't know. Was it a, a friend of his? A, uh, an old commander? Somebody that he's trying to bring honor to? Why is he carrying his skull around on the battlefield? Who knows? It's Warhammer. Skulls everywhere, right? I just used corn red to paint in the diamond there. Uh, just to tie it in and uh, give a little bit more flash of color. In the last section of this video, you always want to make sure that you give a little bit of time to let the paints dry before you get onto the washes. Let the base coats dry. The uh, Agrax Earthshade, I believe it was, is going to be used to paint the entire, pretty much the entire model except for the flesh. And again, when you're going with the Sylvanian color scheme, you want to have red, black, and beige. Uh, red and black be the main colors with beige being your kind of your off color. And then as a spot color, and by spot I mean something you don't want to have on more than one or two places on your model, and in very uh, out of the way inconspicuous kinds of places, you want that rich dark purple to symbolize the uh, uh, the um, von Karstein's or or Sylvania's old uh, richer upper elite colors. I read somewhere that I think it was on Warseer. Dot com the the forums there that purple in real in the real world in the in um, you know in olden times was hard to come by the color purple for for garments and cloth was hard to come by because purple was such an expensive dye that um, rich people nobles and royalty used to like using purple in their designs because poor people couldn't afford it it was a dye that had to be mixed from other dyes and um, it was very expensive to produce in, I think it was Elizabethan times. So lots of um, richer merchants and nobles would use purple as an indication of wealth. And you can tell that in Warhammer because in the color scheme for the town of Bogenhaven, the, their main color in that town is purple. And uh, Bogenhaven is a merchant town and I think it's even written somewhere that they use the purple as a sign of their ostentatious wealth. So just a little bit of history there. And uh, again, that's something that you might want to think about when you're designing your Sylvanian army. The, the tricky thing is, as we move on to Rake, Rakeland Fleshshade, black and red are the colors of Nuln as well. And Nuln is one of the biggest cities in the empire. It's home to the Imperial University. And more importantly, it's home to the College of Engineering in the Empire. And these are the guys that make all the war machines for the Empire armies. So the cannons, the Hellblaster volley guns, the steam tanks, they all come out of Nuln. And so Nuln's colors are red and black, and people who build Nuln armies are going to have lots of red and black anyway. So what we decided to do is to uh, go with having these beige sleeves and little flashes of this purple color in order to tell our guy apart. He's definitely not from Nuln, he's from Sylvania, and uh, that's why his color scheme is just slightly different. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. This video is a July Painting Challenge Appreciation video for Zifa, and uh, he had asked me a while back about doing pre-Vlad Sylvanian Empire Army videos and so this is for him. Thanks a lot man, you're awesome for joining the July Painting Challenge these past two years and I hope you get, uh, you have all the best luck in the new year with all of your projects. Check out his channel, link below in the description and we'll see you in part two. Later! <laughs>